All right, Georgie Prepper here. Welcome to another Prepper News video. Today is the 21st of February, 2024. Russia's donated 200,000 tons of wheat to six African nations. Deliveries were made jointly with the United Grain Company. Support of Russia's ministries and foreign affairs. This whole grain thing is becoming like a real contentious issue. There's protests in Poland. They're dumping grain from Ukraine because the quality of the grain isn't very good. The support and aid that Russia's given the Africa is, despite the sanctions, is still ongoing. You know, despite the despite the war, etc. So they're still supporting these African nations. Obviously, it's going to be a reciprocal thing. That I'm sure that they're getting something from Africa as well. News from Ukraine now. The children of draft dodgers are going to be barred from Ukrainian universities if this debate and motion in the Ukrainian parliament goes through. The fact that they're even debating this really, really just goes to show what a dire situation the Ukraine's in right now. You know, they're losing a lot of territory, a lot of men. There was up to like a thousand POWs captured from Avdivka. Political leadership is proposing that if you don't want to fulfill your civic duty and defend the homeland, the state can deny you services. We've already seen reports, you know, that they won't get benefits, they won't get a passport, they won't get access to services unless they've displaying a military ID. And, you know, like this individual here that says in the comments section, this is what desperation looks like in action. And it's absolutely true because, you know, the fact that this is even getting debated just shows what an absolute dire situation the Ukraine's in right now. And it's not looking good for British nuclear Trident missile test has failed. This Trident missile failure is just absolutely, you know, just not looking good for the British military. I mean, how are you supposed to conduct in a war if all of your equipment just doesn't work? The second failed launch in a row. And there was a misfire back in 2016. And, you know, that's quite a long time ago, really. I mean, that's eight years. I mean, why has it been so long since they last did a test? Is this failure basically a sign that they're just not conducting in these tests? You know, they're too reliant on hoping that it will actually work when the time comes. I mean, uh, how much of any sort of nuclear countries tried? I mean, how much of that is actually going to fail if they were to actually launch everything? What's the rate of failure going to be? A source was quoted by the newspaper saying that it left the submarine but it just went plop right next to them. So <laughs> uh, literally just launched from the ship and then just landed right next to it. So not looking good at all. Iran's accusing Israel of blowing up their natural gas pipeline in a sabotage attack. And obviously this is from a completely Western source. Obviously in the title say that they provide no evidence for the attack. I mean... The Western media states a lot of things and they provide absolutely zero evidence for it. And yet they expect everybody to believe it. And, you know, when some other entity has been attacked and they blame someone, they always make a point of saying that they've provided no evidence to back up their claims or their fact checkers haven't verified it. Absolutely just incredible, the language that comes out of these mainstream media uh, the explosion of the gas pipeline was an Israeli plot, according to an Iranian. The enemy intended to disturb gas service in the provinces and put people's gas distribution at risk. I mean, we've seen this throughout the conflicts. I mean, it's not entirely unfeasible that this is the case because all these conflicts, you know, they're going after the civilians and disrupting their services and their lives. So, I mean, this isn't beyond the scope of possibility. You know, this uh, whole pressure that's being exerted on Iran right now, it's really just all leading up to an escalation, which, you know, we can't stop. It's just like a runaway train or a snowball rolling down a hill. It's just going to end up a bigger beast than what we can handle, really. So Israel's had it again, striking targets in Syria. At least two people killed after a residential building was struck. Obviously, there has been attacks by United States, Britain, Israel on targets in Syria. And this was obviously in response to the attack on the US Army base. It's been 2011. 
since Syria's civil war broke out. It's a damn long time. It's over 13 years ago. Israel's launched hundreds of airstrikes on Syria and it's just completely bombarded, you know, since 2011. And they give uh, various reasons for doing so, but, you know, they're just continuing it right now. So there's fears that the escalating conflicts in the area in the Middle East is going to lead to a larger hybrid war between nuclear powers and, you know, like I said, could escalate into something which we just basically can't stop. The world's attention is still on the ongoing war between Israel and Palestine, but, you know, there's other things going on. We really, as preppers, have to keep a general scope on things. Uh, you know, there's still tensions between India and Pakistan. There's, there's things going on between other countries right now. This whole Houthi thing just won't be going away anytime soon. So this article here is just basically talking about anything that could happen in that area and gives several scenarios and reasons behind it, including recent violence in countries and civil unrest. So worth it, definitely worth a read. So NATO is wanting Kiev to submit to it the targets that it intends to hit. Obviously, Russia is just seeing this as a sign that it's actually NATO that's directly involved in the conflict. It's been demanded that Kiev provide a list of targets. The operation and combat use of the missiles given to the Ukraine should be carried out under the control of NATO specialists. The Ukraine's essentially a part of NATO, even if it's not official. The amount of support that they've been getting is just many, many fold more than what other NATO countries would ever get or have got in the past. So Russia's coming in on the whole nukes in space allegation. Remember, an allegation is a accusation without evidence. So obviously there's no and zero evidence for anything that the United States has been saying about this so-called weapon platform. But the Defense Ministry, Sergei Shoigu, have both addressed the US rumors. Putin's also chimed in. And he's, he's at the Kremlin to report on the special military operation against Ukraine. And he says, Russia is not deployed and does not intend to deploy nuclear weapons in space. There are no plans to do so. Clear that the White House is trying by hook or crook to push Congress to vote on a bill for further funding to the Ukraine. We'll see what tricks the White House will use. The presence of nuclear weapons in space has been banned since 1967. Originally signed by the US, Soviet Union and the Britain. 100 countries have since joined the treaty. And like this user in the comments section here says, if indeed Russia and China were to deploy nuclear weapons in space, what the US and West gonna do? Declare Russia and China enemies and declare war on them. They wouldn't even have the guts to do so. According to that commenter and you know, he's right. They just wouldn't. That's the end of today's Prepper News. Thanks very much for watching. Be safe, be prepared. And I'll see you in the next broadcast. This has been Jordy Prepper, signing out.